Hey guys, in this video, I want to show you how to automate your uh, dropshipping store because once you get some momentum with your sales, you want to like free up your time so you're not, you know, tied down with all of the like mundane tasks and you, you can focus on what's important in your business and how to outsource those things, how where to find people, the templates, uh, the tools that you need and uh, all, all of these resources you'll have in your dropshipping business are product research, right? So how to actually find the product that you want to sell, then the customer service replying to, you know, messenger to email requests from people, uh, you know, asking different questions about the product, their, the shipping, uh, then logistics, you know, the order fulfillment themselves, um, and also the marketing and advertising, which is, you know, the big part of it, right? So the product itself, um, like the product research. So for example, if you go to online jobs, PH, there are a lot of people that have, you know, already like great skills to research products. So here, for example, if you, if you just search for like product research, you'll find a lot of people that already have this like skill set have been, you know, working with some other companies. And so you actually might find some like good, you know, good talent to work with. Um, the same with Upwork, right? So even with Upwork, like the, the only issue with, you know, all of these people is that you have to kind of like every one of them has their own like process and everyone have used like different tools and resources. So you would have to like teach them like what to do like best, right? In the, your approach basically. And then the most important skill in my experience just to have it like prioritize and test, right? So just having like, let's say you have like 10, 20 products, to, to test, I mean, if you if you start like testing, you know, hundreds of products and probably you will not be like very, um, you know, successful, but if you just focus on on few products that have the most potential and that's prioritization is the biggest skill, right? So you can have them prioritized by the amount of likes, shares, which is like virality, right? You can have them prioritized by the number of clicks or a number of traffic that you, you, you send, for instance, to Let's say, you know, one website, you're checking one website and then uh, it gets, let's say, um, you know, 100,000 people to it. And then another gets like 200,000 people to it and they've been advertising continuously. So obviously you will want to prioritize the website that was like more success, more successful. So you want to reverse engineer more of what uh, those guys do, right? And then uh, the profit margins, obviously, you know, if you're selling product for, let's say only like, um, you know, $10 or $20, maybe you'll do more volume, but also profit margins are typically lower. So you want to take that into consideration as well. So you can have them, uh, you know, basically do this product research. And like for, for us, um, typically like one, five products to test a week is a good start, but with the proper research, uh, sometimes you don't even need, you know, that many products to test because once you find a product, then you can just scale it continuously, just focus all of your brand and all of your like sales funnel around one product, right? So that's, that's what where you can, you can, that's basically majority of the funnels that we have, like that's, you know, the concept that we use, right? Um, and then here, like train your first virtual assistant and have them train other, other assistants for you. I mean, this is not difficult tasks. There is not much to do, obviously. I mean, you know, once you find the product, you can continuously scale that product and your virtual assistant can, you know, work a few hours a week on finding more products for you to, to test them, you prioritize and get, get to it. Right. So now automating customer support. So that's typically the first position to hire for, because that's like typically what takes a lot of time, like responding to people, to their emails, asking, where is my order, uh, responding, like some questions about the product. Right. So, Personally, we use um, this tool, which is called Help Scout, right? So this this is designed for um, basically support, right? So you can you can integrate it with Shopify, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to set up. And um, another one you can use is called um, Help Desk with Gorgias, right? And it's also a pretty nice uh, app. It's a bit more expensive, but it has some options. Like for example, it would allow your like um, would help your um, support people to basically upsell, you know, more items um, while doing support. So you can you can read all of this information here about this um, about this product. It's 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 quite good app. So I highly recommend it. Um, and for that, like you can hire virtual assistant for customer support on Upwork. 
um, like so not work like you can you can have a lot of people that that specialize in this like type of support and you can find some people that do like two or three dollars per hour and they might look interesting so I can show you some example examples of those people right so for example you have you, you might have you might have some uh, for example uh, virtual assistant Shopify right so like very simple very simple very simple search right so virtual assistant Shopify so um, you can see here a lot of people like six dollars right um, and like you, you can even find like lower like five dollars right and you can you can hire those people but you can you, you just if you think about like how many clients do they serve like typically to just to maintain the level of income income they need right or if that's a company they might work like with you know like tons of tons of different clients right so you can see here small projects not very good reviews so i highly recommend you find just like one person not an agency and then um you know have them like even if they you know are more expensive you can have them like few hours a day um and from there you can just you know have them full time but it's you know uh, the cheaper the cheaper days it typically you know it's a slower quality of work so then uh, again tra train your first virtual assistant and make them train others and create processes uh, search for um, keywords help scout on upwork so for example here if we put help scout right we'll find some people who already like experience with that right so like um, so let's see customer service uh experts right ten dollars per hour it's like it's on the higher side but you can see like the perfect feedback and everything right so uh project management uh, manager administrative support so help scout support right so we'll just search for that specific like sp that specific category and so uh, so this lady here, expert in Zendesk, Shopify, Berla, AliExpress. So I mean, it's it's very like exactly the apps that I showed you, right? So I mean, that's it, right? You can just uh, you know reach out to her. Customer support, email chat, Shopify setup and management, right? Ten dollars per hour. I mean, obviously you can negotiate it, you know. So it's it's not like set in stone. Um, and you can see a lot of these people here, right? So. Um, Slack for team communications, that's what we use in, in our company. Uh, so we, we use uh, Slack, which is, you know, quite good tool for like team communication. Um, and order fulfillment automation, right? So you need to find an agent to work with to simplify the fulfillment. You know, you start with AliExpress, you, you work with some suppliers, but then you need to find an agent that will actually source any product for you and will ship it to you cost effectively and also time effectively for your clients. And so I also recommend that you pre-order products so they can be shipped within 24 hours. So um, especially in seasons where like there's a lot of demand for certain products, uh, once you start accumulating capital, you can invest some money to buy products up front. Probably it will be even like cheaper for you. Like if you buy in bulk, if you buy, let's say, thousand pieces or five thousand pieces of items right then you can ship it to your warehouse in china and then from there agent can fulfill those items directly to your customer so that might be efficient solution and also will be cheaper if you buy in bulk right the more you buy um i, I cover this in one of my other videos the more you buy basically of you know with a scale the more leverage you have the more you can negotiate because you're a valuable client for for that company now um with um agents typically you would have with good agents you would typically have automatic integrations with apps so they fulfill orders automatically so once you receive orders like within you know 24 hours like your orders are fulfilled or whatever that you know time frame you set up so the orders would go from from your shopify from your Shopify to, you know, directly to um, their app, to their um, interface, and they would um, fulfill your orders from there. Now, marketing. Marketing is, is one of the most, you know, important parts in this business. So first you have to dial it in yourself. There is no like shortcuts with this I found. I mean, I've seen people that try to hire, you know, agencies and freelancers, I mean, but you know, none of them will do, you know, like, and will care as much as you do about like when you're starting the business and you want to figure it out. So a lot of them, they have, you know, multiple clients. So they didn't have just capacity to just focus fully on, on your project, 
right? So you have to figure it out yourself in terms of like how to sell, how to create uh, good ads. And you can watch my other videos on how to create Facebook ads that sell. But it's, it's very important for you to, to understand that there is no shortcuts. There's no like, you know, no matter what, what people promise you, no matter like what, you know, what they, they give you the guarantees and everything, but you have to figure it out yourself. You have to, ha you have to know how to do it. Then you can, you know, basically pass it to someone. So when you have a proof of concept, right? When you know, okay, so that's how I launch my ads. That's how I optimize them. That's how I scale them. It's pretty much can be explained within like, you know, one sheet, like one um, A4 sheet. Then you can pass it to someone, right? So that becomes quite easy. Now on the small budgets, right? Um, you didn't have to like watch too often, like into your ads manager, verify all the ads and see if they're not overspending. But with high, like five thousand dollars a day budgets or more, you have to monitor carefully because, like, if access, let's say you have CBO campaign that's running like thousand dollars a day, then it might like just overspend a lot of. Uh, that might just overspend a lot of. Um, you know, like resources and a lot of money. So you have to monitor that carefully. Um, and you also can use um, like Facebook native automated rules. So you can see here that's within a Facebook dashboard. So rules, you can create a new rule, right? And you can apply them to all active campaigns here or all active ad sets or all active ads. Um, but typically like we would have like, so we would just select all of them, right? and then create a new rule. And sometimes you would have different rules if you're testing different products and sometimes you'd have different um, like benchmarks for different you know layers of your funnel. And so here you would do like, for example, um, like like for, for campaigns, right? On, on, typically we don't do like on campaign level, we'll do on the ad set level, right? So on the ad set level here, um, Let's say we like these are the campaigns that we want to uh, have rules for. So create a new rule, right? So let's say cost per result, right? Cost per result, or you know whatever your um, like desired goal is, right? So here you you would find a purchase. Let's say um, let's say website website purchase ROAS, right? So if website purchase ROAS is smaller than let's say two x, which is let's say your break even point. And let's say it's verified today. And so as you can see, it's like here, you can set up the time zone and everything, right? Then it's basically shut down, right? Turn, turn, turn off ad sets if they're not profitable today, right? So this way, if you're spending a lot, if you're at, you know, if your ad sets or your campaign, like CBO campaign spends like, you know, hundreds of dollars per day uh, or thousands of dollars per day, then you have to need to have this um, kill losers, right? Uh, so ROAS less than two, right? Today, right? So that's like basically a very simple rule that you can set up here. Um, and basically this will apply to any campaigns. Like the rules, like they're not perfect with Facebook. So you have to kind of like monitor them carefully and make sure that, you know, they're actually doing what you want them to do. So make sure that you monitor like it's, 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 you know, it's, you have to monitor, you have to be kind of like understand what is happening with your metrics. Once you do that, once you understand, once you have the deep understanding that can be done within, you know, like few weeks, few months, like you have that good understanding of Facebook dashboards, how all metrics are interconnected with each other, then you can, you know, make it a checklist out of it, or your, your virtual assistant can make a checklist, help you, help you to create it and then pass it to that PPC person or virtual assistant that can basically keep eye on it. Right. But as, as it is like main driver, if you're of your sales and business, then, you know, just requires quite a lot of attention and you have to, uh, like monitor and be engaged with it. Right. And you cannot out outsource certain things, right? So you cannot outsource like, for example, content, content creation process, right? You have to like the ads, the creative, like you have to understand like what works with Facebook ads. The, I mean, there, there is no shortcuts again, guys. Um, you have to dial in the process yourself uh, to understand it. Then you can hire CMO, CMO like who can structure all of these processes for you. But you have to understand how, what like what creative works, like what videos work, right? And, you know, some of the best like advertisers uh, that I know, like they constantly 
you know, on these like on these sites like at spy, right? They constantly like monitor. Okay, so what are the ads like? What are the ads are that are doing well, right? You know, what's selling? Like who's doing the best? Like who's who's making a lot of like sales and money, right? And they constantly like reverse engineer and learn like what's working specifically, right? So you cannot you cannot you know fully outsource it. You have to understand what is happening with that because that's a crucial part of that. Facebook advertising, that marketing part that we have discussed earlier, and you know whatever the platform you are using, you have to understand it at least on a on a on a you know on a decent level before you hire people to do it for you. Because if you if you don't understand what's happening, then it will be hard for you to control the result you're getting. Now, uh, the farther you know vision with a company brand is another thing. Like you cannot outsource this. No one will do this for you, and. You know, uh, communication with key team members, tracking expenses, profits, uh, major hiring decisions, signing checks. Like you have to control your, you know, cash flow. It's something that cannot be like um, outsourced. And then managing the business from a higher point of view. You must lead people. You must show them like what is, um, you know, what is the next step. You know, what is where is it, where is the company heading, right? So what do you do? Like what mission? What uh, values? What principles you have? So all of these things they are hard you know, to, you know, to delegate. And if you want to find someone who is, you know, who can do this for you, that person, like those people typically cost a lot of money to hire because, you know, they, they basically can replace you. And that's why the, the skills that you have are very valuable. You have to be good at those and basically lead people, uh, you know, communicate with them and, you know, lead all of this team together. Right, so guys, so the title of this presentation was "How to Full Automate Your Dropshipping Business 2019." Um, it's, I mean, you cannot fully automate it, and nothing like no business can be like fully automated. There, there should be some involvement from your part, but I showed you how to, you know, basically structure different segments of your business so they are more profitable for you, and um, you know, take take less of your time. Right, so if you like this video, please like the like, uh, click like below, or um, subscribe to my channel. And um, if you have any questions, please comment them below, and I'll make sure to uh, get back to you.